In this lesson, we're going to learn how to import CAD plans into 3ds Max. Now I've opened up Max and it is a blank empty scene that has everything at its default. Now there are two methods that you can use to import your CAD geometry. The first one is the simplest where you can just click on import and import and you can choose your CAD file. Now I had gone and put the CAD file in under the referenced files folder into CAD plans so you will find a copy of that 3D exteriors course lesson 6 so you can click on that, open it and you will see here that you have a dialog import uh, import dialog box you can click on ok and then you have your CAD plans in Max. So you could already start modeling uh, using this geometry you can then move and rotate everything but I do have to let you know that once you do this you essentially run into a workflow dead end scenario because once somebody on the CAD team or if that is even yourself go goes and updates the file in AutoCAD you can't really go and update this imported geometry from CAD. You would essentially have to delete it, re-import it, remove it, re-rotate it. It basically becomes a really tedious process. So I don't recommend that you use this import uh, option at all, but I do just want to show you that it is there in case you're importing a single layer or a single object, something that is quite simple and something that won't change. So I do want to just show you that there are those options available to you. The method that I do recommend when you import CAD plans, especially ones uh, as the ones that we are working with, in other words, plans, sections, elevations, is the reference file link manager option. So click on that and that'll bring up this dialog box that allows you to then under the attach tab to choose a file. We're going to choose that same file that we had looked at earlier, this one. Click on OK. And you will now have the option to rescale it. Make sure that you choose the scale that you had been working with in the CAD file and you then can also choose the layers to include or exclude from your selection. So you could, for example, choose to only import the terrain and the landscape if you do want to start working on that first, or you could just go and choose to import everything. So I'm going to just deselect def points and zero since those are the default CAD layers that we can't remove from CAD. So all of our geometry, or at least the 2D geometry, is on these ticked layers. I'm going to click on OK and then attach this file. That's then going to import everything. And exactly the same way that we had seen it being imported with the standard import uh, method, the only difference now is that once we go and update and resave that original CAD file. Now I do specify that it has to be the same CAD file that you save over once you have made any changes. Then once you go into that same reference file link manager dialog, you will see under the files tab that you'll get a little red mark next to your file showing you that it is not updated and needs to be reloaded. Now you can either choose to reload it with options, so you can then reselect which layers you want to include or not, or you can just simply untick it and reload it and then everything that you had moved and rotated into the correct place within your 3D scene will now still be in the correct location and rotation. It'll just be updated with the newer CAD file. So that is a magic way of working, especially when you go through revision after revision. Also what you can do at this stage, just moving on from there, is you can change the color. If it is too dark, we can make that color slightly brighter. I generally keep it very toned down so that only my 3D geometry has bright colors that stand out. I like to have the CAD pretty much fading away like a gentle blueprint so that you can just use it as a reference. Now, the next thing that we need to do in our workflow is we need to rotate our uh, vertical plans. That means the sections and elevations. So what you can do here is you can start to select those objects that need to be rotated. So I'm just going to select these two. So that is the section that is cutting through the middle of the building here. And before we start to rotate it up, you want to make sure of a couple of things. First of all, you want to know where your zero point is. Since when you rotate it, you want to make sure that you use a reference, you want to basically snap to that reference line which is at zero, so that when you rotate it vertically, that line is still going to be at zero. So that is very, very important. So a few things that you want to do up here. First of all, you want to make sure that your pivot point is a uh, transform coordinate center. 
and you want to choose snap toggle and if you right click on that just make sure that you have at least endpoint selected so with all of that done you can now make sure that your layers are selected correctly you can then also right click in an open area just to bring up your access constraints and then you can choose the correct access constraints depending on which direction you are going to be rotating it in so you'll see that that line becomes yellow in the direction that you're going to rotate in so once you have those three objects done in other words you have the transform coordinate center you have your snap and you have the correct axis constraint you can then click on that zero line and you can rotate it up by 90 degrees so just stop at 90 degrees let go and there you have your section at the correct height now you will know from your plan that you don't necessarily need to move your plan up and down uh, if you are aware of what height your floor levels are at so for example here this floor slab is at 2.45 so once I draw it I need to move that up to 2.45 and I need to be very aware of where those heights are all happening so I'm going to now do the last elevation and it's pretty much the same workflow here you want to select those layers that are that do belong to your elevation and you then want to choose the Y constraint to make sure that this is all still selected. Look for your zero datum line and rotate that upwards by 90 degrees. And there you have it. That's pretty much it. Now the last thing that you can do depending on your style of work, if you would like to build the floors of your building separately you can keep these two plans in other words the ground floor plan and the first floor plan separately next to each other keeping the base point uh, there so that you can build something here and then just move it using the base point but you do want to make sure that things are at the right height so generally you can leave your ground floor plan as it is or you can move it up to the height of your average floor level so in our case our average floor level is 2.45 so for that reason it's a good idea to move everything that is re related to your floor to that height so we could go and select everything here making sure that all of that is selected you don't necessarily need to select your contours since we're going to do that separately and you can move all of this up to 2.45 so I'm just going to hit uh, W for move or at least move up here somewhere and move it up by 2.45 meters and that way once you've done that anything that you draw by snapping on these ground lines will be at that height of the floor level so you just need to make sure that once you're drawing things at lower levels like this terrace down here which is 1.95 you need to now make sure that you move it down so that it is at that same level so with this floor the upper level you have the choice of keeping it here but I do like to very often move them above each other so that they are actually in the correct space in 3d so I like to look at first of all the height so this is 6.25 just going to make sure that yeah that's 6.25 there so that's the average floor height I'm now going to use that base point and snap it onto that height and I want to make sure that I move it up by 6.25 meters I did however already move this base point up by 2.45 so I now need to make sure that I don't add 6.25 plus 2.45 this becomes a bit of a uh, maths problem if you do do things the wrong way so what I'm actually going to do just to simplify things I'll move this back down and let's rather do it this way where we take the upper level we move it so that the ground floor plan if you see I just typed in control Z so everything went back down to zero I can now move this up by 6.25 So that is all at the correct height. I'm going to type on my keyboard control I to select everything. I'm going to isolate this. I'm going to now select all of the layers that are on the ground floor plan and I'm going to move those up by 2.45 by just typing it in here onto the Z coordinate so the only thing that I've left at the original height are these contours this is a 2.45 and if I just undo my isolation you will see that you now have your two floor levels above each other at the correct height 
according to how they are in your elevations. So this basically brings us to the end of this lesson. I'm just going to convert this color so that you can perhaps see it a little bit more. I know that this is a little bit confusing to look at, especially when you have so many lines, but the beauty of it is that now that we've separated all of our CAD layers, we can turn this all off and we can simply turn on the ground plan and let's say the first floor plan. And if you do want to separate them, you can also choose a different color. I do, however, just keep the color the same on all my plans. So here you can pretty much see how your drawing or your plan is working on the two different levels. So that is it for this lesson. We have basically imported our CAD plans using the file link manager. And I've just shown you a few uh, other tips on how you can move, rotate, and uh, otherwise arrange all of your CAD plans within your 3D scene so that everything is set up in the correct uh, dimension, height, rotation, etc. for you to now finally start modeling. And that is exactly what we're going to do in the next lesson.